federal grind gets the Rio de Flag flood project headed in the right direction. Travel between Flagstaff and Sedona make it complicated with new road closures on Highway 89. Good evening and welcome to NAZ Today. I'm community anchor Audrey Nagel. And I'm student anchor Adrian Grola. Thanks for joining us. A project to fight for the life, health, and safety of our community is getting attention. The Rio de Flag flood project was granted $1.6 million by the Army Corps of Engineers to complete repairs on the Clay Avenue detention basin in Flagstaff. Although an additional $50 million is needed to complete the entire project, Flagstaff City Council is pleased with the amount that is granted by the federal government. Mayor Jerry Neighbors says this means Flagstaff is finally getting some attention. The basin is a key piece of the larger plan, Rio de Flag flood control, which hopes to channel water from a 10-year flood out of the city. This plan would minimize damage to historic Southside Flats, Flagstaff, Route 66, NAU's Mountain Campus, and the I-40 Highway. The funding grant is exciting news for the project because it is a high priority due to related safety issues. Yesterday, we told you of the Arizona Department of Transportation's plan for road closures along Highway 89A between Sedona and Flagstaff. NAZ Today spoke with ADOT representative Dustin Krugel to hear the impact this closure will have on the communities that are connected by the highway. This is one of our most narrow, twistiest uh, stretches along the, uh, on our state highway system. ADOT plans to repave the scenic three and a half mile road stretch to repair damage from years of weather and wear. The pavement in this area is deteriorating uh, and that is because we've had all the winter storms that we have uh, through this area and also we have a lot of rock fall. Closure along the highway connecting Sedona and Flagstaff concerns business owners and residents because of possible decrease of tourism. ADOT workers are committed to finishing the project as soon as possible. We understand that uh, this is going to mean that businesses and residents are going to be inconvenienced, but there really uh, there is not a, a traffic control plan that will allow us uh, to get all the work done. ADA ensures that this project is finished efficiently and in a timely manner and has set up motivation for the contractor to complete as quickly as possible. One of the things we've done with this project is we've actually put into the contract uh, incentives for the contractor to complete the project in advance of five weeks. For every day they get the project done in advance, they will be compensated monetarily if they get uh, for, if it takes longer, they're going to get severe uh, penalties. ADOT wants to minimize any negative impact the road work may have on businesses, but it is a project that needs to be completed in a very tight time frame. We have a very uh, limited paving window. If we overshoot it, the pavement uh, will not uh, hold and we'll end up having to repeat the process again. The north end of Oak Creek Canyon on Highway 89 is expected to close from Memorial Day weekend to 4th of July. Kaylee George, NAZ Today. Northern Arizona Healthcare, NAH, is taking a hard look at itself when creating the plan to merge hospital systems. As part of the plan to fully integrate Flagstaff Medical Center and Verde Valley Medical Center, nine administrative jobs have been eliminated. Although the nine employees are affected by the job cut, it is a small amount compared to the 3,000 employees of NAH. President Bill Bradle says these changes signify something far more important. Leaders of this organization are keeping an eye toward continuous improvement and high-level patient care, but in the most cost-efficient way. Resulting in the job cut, other efforts in the plan include consolidation of its system services and will allow the unit to share common leadership, stand our clinical protocol, and continuity of care throughout the system. Bradle says that this realignment is critical to ensure the success of NAH in the competitive healthcare environment. After the break, we look at how one Flagstaff organization will help the 2016 Olympians go for gold. And find out which world-renowned pianist is performing in Flagstaff.
All right, now it's my turn. A little bit on the cloudy side out there today. Here's a look at it in Arizona. Thick high and mid-level clouds moving through. Very weak storm energy moving into the western United States. Coming up, we have to talk about this weak storm system that's going to move in for us tomorrow. And we're also going to take a look at some December through February. Very dry weather statistics as well as very warm. That's all coming right up. Hi, I'm Terry Markson. As seasons change, so does the inventory at Terry Markson Chevrolet Cadillac. To make room for the 2014 models, we're clearing the lot. And that means great deals for you on our 2013s. Right now, you'll find rebates up to $10,000 on select Chevrolet models. Choose from a full line of vehicles, including the totally redesigned 2014 Silverado 1500. You can always count on our same relaxed, no pressure environment. Terry Markson Chevrolet Cadillac, real hometown value. We just left Sochi and the Winter Olympics, and even though the next games are two years away, a new facility in town recently opened up to start preparing hopeful Olympians now. NAZ Today's Imani Payne has the full report. Flagstaff has been known as a high-altitude training destination for elite athletes for decades. Well, this year, the newly launched Hypo 2 Sport is adding even more reasons to choose the Arizona mountain town to boost performance. Hypo 2's mission is to provide elite athletes and those who aspire to high performance the best in altitude training by creating a training environment addressing all of an athlete's needs from strength and conditioning to physical therapy to name a few. Hypo 2 credits their alliance with Northern Arizona University as a fundamental part of helping these athletes excel. Our partnership with NEU is critical. You know, um, if you don't have high quality training venues, you don't have anything. But the fact that we have a 400 meter track, outdoor track, 300 meter indoor track, a 50 meter pool, and a lot of field space means that we can do an awful lot of things that would be impossible without NAU. More than 150 international and domestic athletes who participated in Hypo 2's altitude camps earned a spot on their country's Olympic team for the London 2012 Games, collectively winning 44 medals. Anthony explains why the program continues to excel and produce champions. There's not a lot of guesswork when it comes to figuring out why we can churn out so many athletes because we have everything that they need here. There are lots of places where you can train at altitude, but there aren't that many places that have the full uh, retinue of services and facilities that we have here. We have uh, outstanding training facilities. We have the best in support services, high performance support services. We have the capability to get down in elevation. We're close to a major international airport. We have lots of extracurricular things for teams to do. And, you know, we have an entire city at altitude. Future Olympians aren't Hypo 2's sole focus. The facility is also open to beginners. I think one of the interesting things to think about is we have years and years and years of experience working with the world's best athletes. And to have a situation where we can apply that knowledge to athletes at any level, including people that just want to be able to move, is really a unique thing. Whether your mission is to set a world record or to just get active, Hypo 2's carefully selected staff and successful training program will help you reach your goal. For an AZ Today, I'm Imani Payne. Tonight, the Flagstaff Symphony Orchestra is in dress rehearsals for their next concert. On Friday, Audrey Auditorium will be filled with the sounds of Spain, and Venezuelan pianist Vanessa Perez will be featured as the soloist, along with mezzo-soprano Judith Cloud. Orchestra conductor Elizabeth Schultz and Miss Perez join Sierra Ferguson in the studio to give us a preview of tomorrow's performance. Well, this Friday marks the penultimate, or next to last, concert of the Flagstaff Symphony Orchestra's season. And on Friday evening, the orchestra will be taking the audience to Spain. So, Elizabeth Schultz, the conductor of the orchestra, and Vanessa Perez, who we are lucky enough to have featured as the soloist on Friday evening, are joining me here in the studio today. Elizabeth, can you tell me about the program that we're looking forward to tomorrow evening? Well, f yes, indeed. At 7.30 in Ardry Auditorium, uh, the audience will encounter 
wonderful pieces of music that are inspired by the melodies and rhythms of Spain. Uh, the first is by an American composer, a uh, Latino composer, Roberto Sierra, and uh, he has written a marvelous fun and funny piece of music based on uh, music that was written way back 300 years ago and he's put it into a 21st century mix and it's hysterical for the uh, audience and it's fun for the orchestra. And then our center is uh, our two works by the famous Spanish composer Manuel de Falla. The first is going to feature Professor Judith Cloud of the NAU Music faculty and uh, she is going to sing seven popular songs. Uh, beautiful settings of uh, great melodies uh, f that are inspired and, and uh, inspired by oh, mostly folk folk music and uh, the the heart uh, the words really come to from the heart and then on the second half at the beginning we are featuring Vanessa Perez uh, who is playing Nights in the Gardens of Spain three movements that are actually tone poems for piano and orchestra not necessarily a concerto where the soloist is pitted against the orchestra Wonderful. and uh, we finish off with a great 19th century orchestral romp called Espana by uh, Emmanuel Chabrier. So it's going to be a lot of fun, and I would say that uh, Vanessa and I will be talking about the concert 6.30 before the performance, so the audience will have, some, uh, have a chance to get some insight into uh, just some, some, I guess, sound posts for them to listen and get some insight into the concert. Fabulous. Well, I'd like to go to Vanessa now. We're lucky to have you here in our studio today. Where did you come from today? Like, where did we get you from? Uh, well, I'm, I'm living in New York. Uh, right now, I'm originally from Venezuela, uh, from Caracas. Uh, so uh, I've been I've been in the States for a while. Tell us about your musical background. How'd you get started with piano? Uh, I got started uh, through my mother, who used to play Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata at home. <laughs> so I had to play Beethoven's <laughs> Moonlight. So that's how it all began. And then in in Venezuela, and then my journey. Uh, I, I started performing when I was very little, uh, solo and with orchestras there, and then I, I came to the States for a few years, studied in Europe, and then came back. So tell me about the piece that you're going to be playing on Friday. What challenges um, you as a musician? Well, uh, the, the piece I will be playing is uh, by Manuel de Falla. Um, it's, a, it's a, as Maestro Schultz uh, said, it's a, it's a tone poem for piano and orchestra. These are Falla's impressions of the south of Spain, Andalusia. You can feel the, the aromas of uh, the, the cante hondo from the flamenco. You can hear singing, you can hear guitar, the, the, the contagious rhythms of the Spanish dances. And, and, then, uh, and then here, uh, Fallas depicting the gardens of uh, the Alhambra Palace, the Moorish Palace in the south of Spain, in Granada. And then the second movement, this uh, dance, that you, again, you can hear the flamenco airs. And then the third movement is uh, more gardens in Cordoba, also in Spain. Well, it sounds like um, it's going to be a beautiful program and definitely something that audiences won't want to miss. So head out to uh, Ardry Auditorium at 7.30 uh, tomorrow night. Thanks for joining us. With April 15th approaching, NAZ Today's Kim Kraft sat down with Anthony, Anthony Forchino, the Assistant Director for the Arizona Department of Revenue, to discuss how donations can affect your taxes this year. <laughs> The state of Arizona has an opportunity for taxpayers to decide in some ways where those taxes are directed. With me today is Anthony Forchino. You are the di assistant director of the Arizona Department of Revenue. Yes, Talk about that uh, issue a little bit. We do have this option. Yeah, uh, the tax credit is actually um, a way to take your tax dollar, dollar for dollar, and, and, and decide where you're going to actually put it. In the sense of uh, school tax credits, we have, we have many tax credits, but some of the ones that are basically really important are the school tax credit. And there's two school tax credits. There's a school tuition organization tax credit, and that is the ones that you give to a school tuition organization who then give scholarships to students to go to private uh, schools. Um, that is, there's two separate ones on that, and the, you can, as a single, you can give up to $500 for one and $1,000 for, for married, and on the second one, you can also give 500 or 1,000. So as a married couple, you could give uh, up to $2,000. Uh, and that's the and STO. And, and that's the STO. There's also the, also a different a, condition there's also for the, the, the public school. There's also a public school credit, which is for $200 and $400, and that's for extracurricular activity. So you're giving to a school, and you're giving that donation to a school,
school to be able to support extracurricular activity in that school. And there's also a charitable contribution. There's a charitable which contribution which uh, deals with, uh, and a, a new one just came on board, and it's a charitable contribution, and this is for qualified charitable organizations that give to the working poor, and if they work with the working poor. The second one that came on now, which actually doubles the amount you can give, is for qualified foster care uh, qualified organizations. So it has to have the same qualifications of giving to the working poor, but it's for organizations that help foster k children. That's, so that's good to additional. know. That's the, only, the only one of those credits is the school tuition co organization credit. You can still give until April 15th and take it for this sh past year's uh, tax return. Otherwise, you have to, uh, if you give now, it would be for next year's tax return. Right. So this had to be done by the, the 31st for of December, December for this tax for year. The, for, the, for the public school uh, and the uh, qualified tuition or uh, qualified charitable organizations. School tuition organizations, you can still give to April 15th and take it on your current tax return. Okay. Well, that information will be included on our website, naztoday.com. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you. find out if those temperatures will continue to rise. And there were NFL scouts here at NAU. Find out what some of the football players have to say. What's Pepsi next? What's Pepsi next? It's the latest cola from Pepsi. It's got real cola taste, but 60% less sugar. Real cola taste, 60% less sugar. Mm. Yeah, mm. <laughs> I know. It's unbelievable. Yeah. But this is the most impressive mm. thing I've ever experienced in my entire life. Oh, definitely. <laughs> Let me oh. get the camera. <laughs> I've never had anything like it. <laughs> my parents are going to Yeah, yes. they're going to be so proud. Pepsi next. Drink it to believe it. Tonight's NAZ Today weather is brought to you in part by Terry Markson Chevrolet Cadillac in Flagstaff. I already knew that I was going to go to college, you know, from a young age. I definitely want to major in political science, become the mayor or something, make the situation better for other people. My name is Justin, and I am your dividend. All right, we started off taking a look at some winter weather statistics for selected cities across the region, and it's no brainer that it's been warm and dry. And I'm sorry this is so small. I took this graphic off the National Weather Service page, and thank you, thank you to them for putting it together. And what it basically shows is Flagstaff in 150. 15 years of record keeping. We are the 12th warmest. This is just through February, December through February, 12th warmest year, 11th driest year, 15th lowest snow season. Payson is the 13th warmest and the 9th driest. Then we have Sholo, 6th warmest, 2nd driest. Winslow, 15th warmest, 2nd driest. And also down in Prescott, seventh warmest, and I can barely even read it myself. I think it says the third driest. Obviously, it doesn't take into account the March 1st big precipitation we had. In a couple weeks here, we'll start talking about where this winter ranks as far as warmth and dryness. Today, another mild day, 56 degrees, plenty of high cloud cover out there today. We take a look at it on the satellite. Nope, we'll take a look at it in the satellite in a second. I want to show you the high temperatures elsewhere. 68 Winslow, 68 Camp Verde, 68 Sedona. These will be the warmest temperatures for a few days. Late in the weekend, we'll start to see temperatures warm back up like this. And the reason being is we have a weak storm system entering the west. It's very disorganized. You can see some moisture moving through the wasp satch very weak storm system way up here here's our thick cloud, cloud cover but we're near the back of it we're going to see decreasing clouds through the night but in the meantime we're going to see a weak cold front push towards the region through the day tomorrow and I switch it over to a wider view because the main cold front still up in the Pacific Northwest is going to take a very dry track right through the Intermountain West and then just barely clip the four corners of Arizona. So a little bit on the breezy side tomorrow. Temperatures down a few degrees, partly cloudy, mostly sunny. I think we will not be as cloudy as today. A little bit of gusty winds during the afternoon, but then behind the front on Saturday, we'll have a pretty strong northerly wind and that'll drop temperatures down with high temperatures in Flagstaff.
down into the 40s, so around 10 degrees cooler than where we were today. And then by late weekend, high pressure builds back in and we start to warm up overnight tonight. We'll call it partly cloudy, not as cloudy as it was all day. Early morning low 29 degrees tomorrow, a little bit on the breezy side, a couple degrees, not as warm as today as this cold front makes its way to the region. It does not look to have any moisture really to force any showers. Slight chance of very light rain showers, mainly I think for very far eastern Arizona, but I wouldn't rule out a little sprinkle out there tomorrow, but really no big deal. Okay, here's a look at the temperatures statewide tomorrow. 68 Sedona again, 65 Prescott, 64 Payson and 65 in Winslow. We're cooler out there on Saturday with plenty of sunshine behind the front. It'll be on the windy side with the wind out of the north. By Sunday, we're back at it with high pressure, but then Monday and uh, Monday, we're still high pressure, but another kind of same track cold front approaches the region and starts to bring up the wind again Monday and Tuesday. So kind of a really spring like forecast here with a lot of wind and not a lot of moisture. As I mentioned for you, so no, 68 tomorrow cooler on Saturday. Temperatures start to jump back up. The wind I think will pick up again next week as another kind of very inland track storm moves our way. All right, so wind to look forward to. Yeah, I don't know if you want to look forward to it. But. <laughs> well, Something we can expect. Yeah. The wind. Yes. So with the NFL scouts here. Yeah, we had uh, NAU had their pro day yesterday, and we're also going to have an update coming from the Sky Dome next. I've tried all kinds of TV services. The phone company wasn't cutting it, so I cut down. Spotty satellite? Nah, that dish wasn't advertising. But the all new Sudden Link? It comes with free HD and a picture so sharp it makes real life look lame. Now I have up to 300 channel choices, earloads of digital music, 10,000 on demand titles, and new TiVo stream that turns my tablet into a TV and lets my DVR take road trips. I've seen the future of TV, and the future is easy. It's almost the end of NAU basketball season as the men are in the Sky Dome for their last Thursday game to face conference rival Montana State. Sports reporter Kaylee Emery went over to the Sky Dome to talk about this upcoming match. Thanks, Jacob. We're here in the Sky Dome where the NAU men's basketball team is getting ready to face conference rival Montana State. The Lumberjacks upset Weber State this past Saturday, 73 to 71 in overtime. The Lumberjacks really are looking forward to the playoffs, and I'm here with Mitch Stroman. And what do the Lumberjacks need to do in order to get to playoffs? Well, they got to win. I, they need to win tonight, and, and a win tonight against Montana State would be huge. It might even get them in the tournament, depending on how some other things go. But if they win tonight and they win Saturday in this building against Montana, they will make the Big Sky Conference postseason tournament. So then who are the key players to watch out for tonight? Well, I think for us, one of the key players is going to be Max Jacobson. The senior, big guy, plays the center, plays the four. He needs to get a lot of deep touches tonight, and he'll be able to finish at the rim. They're very foul prone, Montana State is, and they can draw fouls and, and put our guys, our bigs, to the line like Max Jacobson. And for them, another big, Paul Iguanu, number 11. And look for him tonight. The guy is a walking double double. He's tough. He is very, very aggressive against the Lumberjacks, and it should be a good matchup. All right. Well, definitely looking forward to this game, and I'm going to send it back to you, Jacob. Thanks, Kaylee, for that update, and we wish the Lumberjacks good luck on tonight's game, which you can catch tonight at 6:30 right after this newscast. High school baseball and softball teams has a, had a busy day yesterday as Flagstaff took on the Barry Goldwater Bulldogs. The Flagstaff boys baseball team was on the road at Goldwater as they shut out the Bulldogs 7 to nothing. The Lady Eagles softball team hosted the Bulldogs for the 6 to 3 win and Flag's Kennedy Party had 3 RBIs and is batting 500. The Eagles will host Empire tomorrow night at 6:30. The MPA baseball and softball teams were in Ash Fork earlier today. They're, they're away non-conference game. 
and the boys have a two and three record and are currently averaging six runs per game, while the girls have a one and zero oh record to start their season off. Yesterday was Pro Day here at NAU, and as NFL scouts from 12 different teams attended the Pro Day to check out the talent that the Lumberjacks have to offer. Sports reporter Alex Lucero attended the Pro Day and spoke with a few of the athletes participating. The NAU Pro Day featured some of our premier players here at NAU for the football team, and after today, they're hoping that their names are called on draft day. But before the NFL draft happens, these players were just happy to be back on the field doing what they love. Uh, it was great, you know, I've been gone for about two months now, you know, really putting the work in for six hours, six, seven hours a day, and, you know, the day was finally here and I was ready, and it was, I think we had a great showing today. After Pro Day was over, some players were very proud of their performances overall. Everybody wants to be confident, but at the same time we're humble, just because we know, you know, how, how small this opportunity is. Uh, it's definitely a blessing just to be in this position. Uh, it, it's a lot of guys that are killed to be in this position, so I'm just trying to live in the moment and just take every day as it comes. I'm pretty confident, you know, uh, hopefully I picked up some interest from uh, some of the scouts here today, uh, as well as some that weren't here today, you know, with my numbers and everything, so we'll see how it goes after that. I'm extremely confident, you know, I went out to the East West Shrine game, had a good showing there, and then, you know, I had a pretty good showing here today, and, you know, just getting ready now, you know, keeping my faith in God, working hard, and I'm ready for draft, draft day. And if any of these players' names are called on draft day, it'll be an experience they'll never forget. I won't be surprised, but at the same time, I'll be blessed because this is, that's what I work for. That's what I wanted to do. So I won't, won't be surprised if God blessed me with that at all. But at the same time, still got to keep working because it really doesn't mean anything when they, when they call you. You still got to make the team. I believe someone's going to give me a chance. Uh, I'm looking for an opportunity anywhere. It'd be good. I'm not looking for a specific team. Um, I'm looking for the team that wants me because uh, and that team will get 100% of what I got. For NAZ Today, I'm Alex Lucero. The Phoenix Suns are in action tonight as they take on the Oklahoma City Thunder. The Suns are coming off a loss on Tuesday to the Clippers and are looking for a bounce back win against the best team in the Western Conference. The game tapes, takes place tonight at the U.S. Airways Center at 7 o'clock. And the Phoenix Coyotes are in action tonight as well and are looking to build on their win over the Canucks earlier this week. The Coyotes take on the Canadians tonight at Jobbing.com Arena and the puck drops at six, 7 o'clock. So... Some pretty exciting stuff for those football players with the NFL draft coming that, up. That'd be so Definitely. cool to see those guys go to the NFL. Yeah. Make sure to stay tuned. We'll have a weather recap when we come back. Approaching storms, so this will be, bring a bit of a breezy day tomorrow. Temperatures down just a couple degrees. Much cooler on Saturday with a northerly wind. Temperatures rebound Sunday and early next week, but it will turn windy again on uh, Monday and Tuesday as another weak storm system approaches the region. And for you down in Sedona, 68 tomorrow, 63 the coolest day of the forecast on Saturday. Well, thank you for tuning into NAZ today. Make sure you don't change the channel because Montana State will be playing NAU. Have a good night. <laughs>